guys what's up today we're going to integrate by switching to polar coordinates we have a double integral here integral from negative 2 to 2 for y integral from 0 to square root 4 minus y squared for x and then we're the function we're integrating is e to the negative x squared minus y squared just a few things to recall for polar coordinates x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta and then the relationship there would be that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And whenever we switch to polar coordinates to do a double integral, we have to remember this relationship here. Our dA is r dr d theta. So that dA for polar coordinates is r dr d theta. So those are the three things that we need to keep in mind there. Uh, the transformation here, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and then r dr d theta is what we're going to replace our differentials with when we get to the integration. So what we got to do first is look at this region of integration given by the bounds. So from the bounds we can see that y is between negative 2 and positive 2. x is between 0 and the square root of 4 minus y squared. So once we have these bounds, these are actually type 2 bounds, once we have these bounds, we ask ourselves, what is this region of integration? I need to know um, what is going on here. So x is positive, so this is to the right half of the plane. But what is it? It's from negative 2 for y to positive 2 for y. And if I set x equal to this rightmost bound, x equals 4 minus y squared, square both sides, get x squared equals 4 minus y squared. Move that y squared over, we see that this is x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's a circle. So x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle of radius 2. And since it's the positive square root, this is the right half of the circle of radius 2. So that's our region of integration. So we're integrating over a circle makes sense to switch to polar coordinates. Every time we're integrating over something that has circular symmetry or something like that, it makes sense to switch to polar coordinates. That's our whole motivation for switching to polar coordinates is when our region of integration is some kind of circle or part of a circle or maybe circles, maybe including an inner circle and an outer circle kind of situation, anything that has like a polar symmetry or polar representation that's easy to work with. Now let's go through setting up the bounds for this circle. So this circle is actually just the right half of a circle. Let's just draw that again here. So the integral integrating over this half a circle. Now in polar coordinates we would describe this as r goes from 0 to 2. Theta we would say goes from um, not 0, it would go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So we got our bounds here. Now the next thing is to switch our integrand. Well, so that tells us that negative x squared minus y squared would be equal to negative r squared. So our function that we're integrating is actually e to the negative r squared. So our function that we're integrating is e to the negative r squared. Now we plug everything into our double integral. So our double integral becomes integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Integral from 0 to 2, so that's our r, e to the negative r squared, r dr d theta. Now we have some integration that we can do here. The theta, there's no theta in the bounds of r. There's no theta in my integrand. I can move this d theta over here to this integral and integrate theta directly. So that's going to give me the integral from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, d theta. Integral from 0 to 2, r e to the negative r squared dr. All right, and now that theta integral is pretty easy. That's just theta from pi over 2 to pi over 2. Well, that's just pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 times this integral e to the negative r squared times r. That's a u sub u 
equals negative r squared du equals negative 2r dr. So we're going to integrate e to the u negative du over 2. So this is the integral. Let's see, when r equals 0, u equals 0, so that goes down here. And when r equals, neg when r equals 2, I do 2 squared to get 4, so u equals negative 4. So negative 4. And then e to the u. And then r dr becomes negative du over 2. Negative du over 2. That does the u sub. All right, so we continue from there. Uh, I think what I'll do to attack this integral now is I'll use this negative sign to negate the bounds here. So I'll go from negative 4 to 0 instead of 0 to negative 4 by taking that negative sign, swapping those bounds. This pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that's going to become pi. So let me just simplify the integral a little bit here. So we're going to get this is equal to pi integral from negative 4 to 0, 1 half e to the u du. So this is going to equal pi over 2, just pull that 1 half out, e to the u from negative 4 to 0. So this is equal to pi over 2 times e to the 0 minus e to the negative 4. And e to the 0 is 1. Our answer is pi over 2 times 1 minus e to the negative 4. Box that in. And that is our answer, pi over 2 times 1 minus e to the negative 4. And that is an example of switching to polar coordinates to simplify the integral. Actually, even to do the integral, we couldn't have done the integral otherwise, actually. It's an, it's an um, integral with no antiderivative, e to, the e to the negative x squared. There's no antiderivative for that function. So if we go back and look at the original function, it literally cannot be done without switching to polar coordinates. So this is the um, advantage of being able to use different coordinate systems.